What's up guys, Gary G back again for another video. Today, what we're gonna do is we are going to get this vehicle prepped for a ceramic coating. This is my wife's Mercedes, it's a GLK 350. Uh, in this video though, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna talk about the beginner's guide to polishing. Things that you need to know when you're getting ready to start polishing for just paint correction or paint enhancements or for ceramic coatings, whatever it is that you're gonna offer. So in this video, I'm specifically gonna focus on the hood of this, this Mercedes, different ways you can polish. I'm actually gonna do a two-step on this vehicle, but the same thing could be applied for one step. It's just you're using an all-in-one product instead of a cut uh, and then a polish, so a compound and then a polish. So we already washed this, decontaminated it. We did an APC rinse. We did an iron remover on the wheels. All of the paint, everything's ready to go. It's squeaky clean. We don't need to do any clay bar because I keep this uh, Mercedes pretty clean. I'm washing it every week and I've kept it maintained. So go ahead and stick around and I'm gonna teach you the way I was taught to get started in polishing. Let's go. Okay, so let's go over the uh, compounds, polishes, things that you need to know about. Uh, to get started. So you're gonna hear things called a one step or a cut and polish or a buff and polish or any combination of those. And what that's really referring to is if you're gonna do a one step, it's just one pad, one product, and you're just gonna take out, usually roughly that does about 50 to 60%. It's, it's not gonna be um, all of the defects, but it's gonna be noticeable. It's usually for paint enhancements, removing oxidation, uh, any haze or things like that to the paint, but it doesn't necessarily get out all the defects. So you're gonna want something like, like this. This is 3D Speed. This is an all-in-one product. See, it says True One-Step Correction Glaze. The thing about this is this has what's called fillers in it. And what that is, is it uh, tends to, uh, uh, it helps kind of diminish the look of small scratches by filling it in with some kind of resins. Um, but this is a really good product for a one-step has diminishing abrasives and what that is is it means that the abrasives in it are, are larger once you start and as it breaks down it gets smoother so that's how it's able to cut and then finish down. Usually you are going to um, use that with a medium pad, medium to lighter pad. This is an HDO orange pad and it's a softer pad. This is one that I would use for a one step. This is one of my favorite pads. You can use a coarser pad, but a lot of times that leaves haze and you're gonna wanna get rid of that. So I would think that the best thing to do for that would be to use like a mid-grade pad um, with a one step. Then you're gonna go into what they would call cut and polish. So for this specific vehicle, this is my vehicle, my wife's, and I'm gonna do a two-step, a true paint correction on this. So I'm gonna do a, a cut or a, a compound and then a polish before I put on uh, Crystal Serum Light uh, ceramic coatings three to five year. So uh, what I'm gonna do is a two stage, so that's called a cut and polish. And what I'm gonna use uh, is the two system here from Shine Supply is Classic Cut and Classic Polish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the Classic Cut compound with my DeWalt 20 volt uh, dual action polisher. This is also another HDO pad. This is the blue, which is their more coarse pad. So I'm gonna use my uh, compound with the HDO blue. And then when I come back with the polish afterwards, I am gonna use the classic polish with the orange pad. So after you're done doing a cut and polish, the next step is to use a paint prep or an isopropyl alcohol mixture that strips the paint of any polishing oils or fingerprints or anything that's left on the paint. So it's clean, smooth paint ready to grab onto the coating. After that, that's when you go into your ceramic coating. On another note, I did just get this DeWalt 20 volt. I'm really liking this as far as uh, battery powered polishers go. So if I am uh, still satisfied with this in a couple of weeks, I'm gonna go ahead and give my opinion on a video. So if you guys are interested, you can go ahead and check this out as well. So I've already done most of the hood. I'm just gonna do this last little section right here. This last square here, I've already done the rest of it. So <clears throat> you're gonna wanna put about four dots after you've primed your pad. Uh, whatever product, like I said, I'm doing the, the cutting stage here. I'm going to go back and polish this, but this would be the same exact thing for a one step. So on your lowest setting, we're going to spread out the product. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tap it out like this. I'm going to 
come back on my lowest setting and I'm gonna spread it out. And then I'm gonna go up to my working speed and then I'm gonna finish off. What I'm gonna do is what's called cross hatch patterns, which means that we got a square here. I'm gonna go up, over, overlap halfway, down, overlapping halfway like this. Once I get to that, I'm gonna come back and do it this way. And I'm gonna do that about three times and then I'll be done. So let's do it. before um, for one I'm using a dual action polisher what that means is it's spinning this way but it's also oscillating so it's doing like figure eights there's also rotary polishers which just spin this type of uh, polisher just causes there to be less heat on the panel and it also doesn't leave hazing um, but the rotary is very good to cut quickly uh, it cuts a lot quicker you just have to move it more because the, uh, the heat that gets generated on the panel is higher also when you're pressing down you're not pushing hard you're really just letting the weight of the polisher and your hand rest on it it's about maybe five pounds of pressure or so and you want to make sure you're moving about one inch per second so one inch per second coming back going doing your cross hatch patterns you take a microfiber towel and we're going to go in and light swirling motions like this I'm gonna wipe off all the polish. This um, compound from Shine Supply that I'm using, Classic Cut, man, excellent wipe off. Excellent wipe off. Usually I use the 3D Speed or 3D One, one step. Problem with that is it does smear. Not a problem, just takes a little bit longer. So. Okay, so I'm going to bring you in now. A lot of those swirls are gone. Now remember, we're still going to be coming back with polish. But this is after the cutting phase. So if you were doing a one step, you would already be done with this panel. You would just move on to the next. So anyways, this video was requested by a subscriber named Cash. So this is for you, Cash, and for everybody else who has questions about how to do polishing or prepping for ceramic coatings. If you're interested to see the process of putting a ceramic coating on, I'll go ahead and put the video up here. I did a, uh, a video on a different Mercedes, a C300, about two weeks ago, uh, that I did a um, three to five year coating from G-Technic. It's Crystal Serum Light. So if you have any questions or curiosities about that, then you can go ahead and check that out. But uh, if you have any more questions, just leave them down below in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. See you guys on the next one. Peace. Stay slick.